from Dubai. We are joined by Bavik Mita, uh, Deputy uh, uh, Head of Research, uh, uh, Chief Marketing at Century Financial. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Bavik, how do you explain this divergence in the performance of GCC markets, which seems as if we are seeing uh, uh, cautious calmness in the market? How do you explain this? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Now, what has happened is uh, there are two big set of factors that are affecting the GCC markets at this point of time. So I would start off by talking about the core earnings. And second is, of course, the overall, overall uh, impact of the oil prices on the fiscal budget of major GCC nations. So if you look at the GCC equity performance, uh, bearing the performance of Dubai equities and Bahrain, Majority of the other indices like Abu Dhabi as well as Saudi, they are trying to they are struggling with their overall market performance. So Dubai is up by the Dubai based DFM index is up by fifteen percent, whereas Bahrain is up by ten percent. Now we've we've got really good set of earnings from uh, both these uh, countries, led by banking and real estate sector. Whereas with other countries, if we talk about specifically the indices of Saudi and Abu Dhabi. Uh, we do feel that the overall oil price, uh, you know, the, the overall slowdown in the oil price demand is actually trying to impact the overall equity prices over there. So despite the ongoing geopolitical conflict, we are not seeing a major recovery in the other non-Dubai, non-Bahrain equity indices. But uh, are there factors that are pushing in the other direction or driving the other direction or do you think long-term pressure will, and this will be long-term and keep uh, putting pressure on the performance and uh, profits of companies i want more clarification of this issue Bavik. right so if we talk about the overall profitability of the companies uh, overall in the gcc a uh, majority of them are seeing the diversification to the non-oil economy, right? So we have seen ambitious, ambitious growth targets from Saudi, I, I mean the non-oil economic growth targets from Saudi Arabia, Abu Dhabi, Dubai. But now what has happened is, uh, despite the fact that they are moving away from the diversification from the oil to non-oil, the, the break-even, the fiscal break-even oil prices are growing by every passing month. So Saudi Arabia currently requires something like $90 and above. Abu Dhabi is currently requiring something like $60 and above. So in, in a scenario where the oil prices are not stable, they are not able to increase the output, the amount of capital that will be taken away from the state-owned utilities, that will be high. That is, the to answer the specific question, that is one of the reasons that's going to impact the overall bottom line. Sorry, Bavik, 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 sorry to interrupt you on yeah. this point, but yeah. just for clarification, yeah. I'm trying to search for an explanation for your view, because uh, when you say that companies or Saudi and Abu Dhabi markets specifically are suffering to go because of higher, uh, sorry, pressure from oil prices, some people this is a, a controversial point anyway. There is no decided answer because some investment banks or foreign investments, for example, believe in Aramco share is a defensive share. But so how can we explain this point of view that you're saying clearly? See, what happens is ultimately when, it, when you talk about equity markets, it, it's, it's all about sentiments, right? Now we all know how diversified the Dubai economy has been. Whereas you compare that with Saudi Arabia, I understand that Aramco is a defensive play. It has been the dividend play, even in, in case of the Adna group companies. But if you look at the overall sentiment, that doesn't go well when we talk about a lower decline in oil prices. So we have a study where, you know, almost the 70 to 80 percent of the correlation with the oil prices is higher for indices, specifically if we talk about Abu Dhabi and Saudi Arabia. So this is where this entire play comes into the picture. Okay, in this case, do you think uh, we can uh, see a selectivity continuing by investors who it seems to be clear in some sectors that are outperforming versus other traditional sectors in the GCC? Uh, we continue to bank on primarily real estate and banking. 
so even in case of uh, bahrain equities uh, bearing the telecommunication and the industrial sector there is not big amount of traction that we are seeing in rest of the other sectors so if we were to put an overweight target we would continue with a positive target coverage for real estate and banking sectors bavik meeta thank you so much thank you us from century financial have a nice day hope to see you again on the show thank you, thank you so much thank you have a nice day